This lesson covers the second half of Chapter 8, Section 5, in which we'll be factoring polynomials in to find special products. And we'll see that. In this case, we'll be dealing with just binomials. Binomials just have two terms. So the directions ask us to determine whether each binomial is a difference of squares. If so, we factor. If not, we explain why it's not. And so we better figure out what is this thing called the a difference of squares. Well, here it is. We need two perfect squares. The first term is a perfect square, like this one here. And this last term, the second one, is also a perfect square, like 25. And we need one minus sign. And sometimes they'll get a little tricky, because sometimes they might end up putting the minus sign out in front. So they could have had this, negative 25 plus 49x squared. Again, this would be okay as well, as long as there's just one minus sign, either in front of the first term or the last term. It doesn't matter, as long as there's just one. And both need to be perfect squares. So let's see how this factors. See, if you took the square root of this first term and the last term, you see this first one is 7x. The last one here is 5. So what we do is we use those as the two numbers inside the two binomials. Now again, we want the first term to make that 49x squared. So if we have 7x as both, both of the first terms in our two binomials, it would make that number. Same thing here with the 25. We want 5 times 5 to multiply to make 25. And the reason why we use those numbers is because we only have two terms. That must mean that the outside and inside terms cancel out to make 0. So in order to get a minus 25, I need a minus 5 here and a plus 5 here. So a sum and a difference. And you'll notice that when we go ahead and check the outside terms, they make a 35x. The inside terms make a negative 35x. So you'll notice that they cancel out to make 0. So that's why. is because the reason why we don't see that middle term is because those outside inside terms will cancel. Well, in order for them to cancel, we need the same numbers, but opposite in sign. And so that's what we're looking for. So all of the problems today, will, if they factor, they'll factor like this, with 1 as a minus and 1 as a plus, but the same numbers between the two signs. So let's take a look at the some of the problems that we'll end up seeing. Again, we need two perfect squares, so that's what we look for here. And I see that x squared is a perfect square. It makes x as if I take its square root, and 4 is the square root of 16. So those are the numbers I end up using inside the two binomials. So x and 4, x and 4. And for us to get a minus sign in front of the 16, we need 1 to be minus, 1 to be plus. And it doesn't matter where you put the minus sign or the plus sign, as long as 1 is minus and 1 is plus. And you'll notice that the outside terms, so if we take a look at those numbers, we've got our x times 4 makes our 4x. We've got our negative 4 times x makes a negative 4x, and they cancel out to make 0. That's why we don't see that middle term. So we've got our answer. x minus 4 multiplied by x plus 4. Well, taking a look at the next one here, we've got to look to see if both numbers are perfect squares. So we see that with this one. The square root of 9b to the 4th makes 3b to the 2nd. So one of the things you'll see on this lesson is they'll use different exponents other than 2. So as long as this is an even exponent, so all even exponents are perfect, perfect squares. So as long as it's an even exponent, it's going to end up being a perfect square. So that one is. Well, let's like, take a look at 200. So a lot of people will make the mistake and they'll say, oh, the square root of 200 is 100. But that's not the case. We need two numbers that multiply to make 200. And we see this is an irrational number. This is not a perfect square. So that's a common mistake is that people think, oh, I just take half of the number. But no, that's not the case. Half of it would be numbers that add to make that value, not multiply. So this is that last term is not a perfect square, so it's not a difference of squares. So that would be our answer, actually, no. And you would say, well, the last term is not a perfect square. Well, let's take a look at the next one here, a little different. We've got a 1, and a lot of people get confused with 1. What is 1, a perfect square? Well, yes, it is. 1 times 1 makes 1. And again, we've got a different exponent other than 2, but it's even. So this is a perfect square. So m to the third times m to the third makes m to the sixth. So we go ahead and check our 
our problem here. We'll put 1m to the third, 1m to the third. And 1's going to be a plus sign, 1's going to be a minus. So see, again, I switched them this time. Did a little different than I typically do. So it doesn't matter which one's minus, which one's plus, as long as they're opposite inside. And you'll see it ends up working out because when you check your outside inside terms, see, one of them is positive in this case, and one of them is negative. And so they always cancel out to make zero. So there's your answer, the 1 plus m to the third, and we have a 1 minus m to the third. Well, let's take a look at a couple other problems here. 36s to the second. Yes, that's a perfect square because it's an even exponent, and 36 is 6 when I take its square root. So 6s is the number there. 4t squared. Yes, that's a perfect square as well. 4 or t would be 2t. The square root of 4t squared would be 2t. So we just use those as our numbers. 1 minus sign, so we're set to go. 6s minus 2t, and you'll end up with a 6s plus 2t. And again, you'll see that those outside terms and inside terms will end up canceling out. You see how this ends up making a 12st. And over here, you end up with that negative 12st. And that's why it always ends up canceling out, because they're the same number but opposite in sign. And so you get your answer there. So 6s minus 2t and a 6s plus 2t. Well, let's take a look at the next one, see if it ends up working out. And we look at the first term, and a lot of people think, oh, this may not be, but, you know, two numbers that multiply to make x squared y squared just be x and y. x times y times x times y would make x squared y squared. So that works out. 196, oh, well, two numbers that make that. Now, this one's tough, but if you think about it this way, it's almost 144, just a little bigger. And 144 it would be 12. Well, 196 is an even number, so try an even number. And 14 times 14 will end up working. If you look at just the first two numbers, 4 and 4, make 16, a 6 at the end, which is what we have here. Well, those are both, both perfect squares, but we have one more criteria. We need one minus sign, but I don't see it. This is a sum, not a difference. And so that would not end up being a difference of squares. And so that would be our... Explanation there, no, sum, it's not a difference, sum. Oh, I should probably say it is. It is a sum, not a difference. Well, let's take a look at the last one we've got here. We've got a 16p to the fourth. Well, that makes 4p squared. And then over here, the square root of 100q squared would just make 10q. All right, so we've got those two, are two numbers, so we'll go ahead and use those in there. 4p squared minus a 10q, and we also have a 4p squared plus a 10q. And that would be our answer in this case. It does end up working out because we have one minus sign. Now, what they might end up doing is sometimes people want you to factor completely, and that's actually the next section asks us to do that. So if you ever see a problem like this, they might not write the answer this way. You might end up seeing them factor out a common factor first. So let's try that. Let me go ahead and rewrite what I've got here. The 16p to the fourth minus 100q squared. And so if I went ahead and took out that common factor of 4, I can make the problem a little bit easier on myself. And so if I took out 4, it would end up being smaller. So it would be a 4p to the fourth minus 25q to the second. So another way to write this, and they're both perfect squares, and there's one minus sign in between, would be to have that 4 factored out. And so if I factor out that 4, I'm left with a 2p to the second minus 5q, and a 2p to the second plus 5q. So that could also be another answer that you'd end up seeing. I would take either answer on this lesson here. So those are the possibilities here of types of problems that you'll end up seeing on tonight's homework. Good luck.